What's going on YouTube? It's Craig, Certified Technician here at ApplianceVideo.com. And today I'll be showing you how to enter and run different diagnostics tests on this Whirlpool French Door refrigerator. But before we get too far, make sure you hit that like and subscribe. Without further ado, let's jump right in. Before entering diagnostics, you want to familiarize yourself with the user interface. You have six buttons on here. In order to enter diagnostics, you'll simply want to simultaneously hold the first two buttons. Now on the display, you'll see it count down until it enters diagnostics. Now, once you have entered diagnostics, the first thing you're going to see is a 01. This is going to be for the first test. To navigate through diagnostics, you have the first two, which will enter, the third button, which is typically a select, and then you have the fourth and fifth button is to navigate up or down. So the first test that's going to pop up is going to be for the freezer compartment thermistor. And you'll notice that at first it shows 01, and then it's going to start blinking. There are three different things that can blink at this time. You could show a 1 for pass, a 2 for open, or a 3 for short. Now, if you're getting a short or you're getting an open, that means that the thermistor is bad. And now, if you want to go to the next test, you'll simply want to hit the directional arrow up. This will show test two. This test two is going to be for the refrigerator compartment thermistor and will also have the same readings. So if you get anything other than a pass, you'll want to go ahead and replace that thermistor. Moving forward, we want to go to test number three. This test right here is for the evaporator fan motor in the air baffle system. This refrigerator uses the air from the freezer compartment to cool the refrigerator. So at this time, what you're going to listen for is a door to open and close. And I want you to put your hand in the back because your fan is going to run continuously. And you'll see on the display, the door will open and close. So you should feel air coming in and then you should feel air cut off. This is showing you that your evaporator fan motor is working correctly and that the air baffle system is working correctly. If either one of these are damaged, a lot of times you'll have poor cooling inside the refrigerator compartment and a lot of times poor cooling in the freezer compartment as well. Going down to test number four, this is going to be our compressor and condenser fan motor test. Now you can do this and turn it on and off, but be aware that if the compressor turns on and you turn it right off, it will not start back up for approximately about another five minutes. So when you have this test on, you'll want to go to the back of the refrigerator and make sure that that big compressor bulb is actually running. If it's not running, that means that you probably have some type of failure around the compressor and you'll need to call a technician. But the other thing to look for right now is the condenser fan motor. This fan motor cools down the compressor so that it doesn't trip on any type of overload. If your condenser fan motor isn't running, a lot of times you'll find the center and the sides of your refrigerator are boiling hot. So run this test, make sure your condenser fan motor is running, if it is not, once again, make sure you call for service. Moving down to test number six, this is going to be our defrost circuit test. And when you go to this test and select it, you'll get one of two readings. You'll either see a 01 for close or a 02 for open. Now, what does this mean? Generally, when you have a defrost problem, you can open up your freezer and see the back wall is covered with frost. And this is supposed to melt every about six to 10 hours. If it is built up of frost, air cannot flow through the refrigeration properly. So you'll have two different outcomes. If it says that it is closed, that means that the unit is not going through defrost because it may be some type of board or timer problem. But if it shows that it is open, that means that either the defrost termination or the heater is bad. Either one, if you have a defrost problem, I would not try to tackle it yourself. Make sure you call for service. The next test I'll take you to is service test number nine. This is going to be for the UI functionality. So when you go here, you can press different buttons and it should give you some type of reading on the screen. Next in line is test number 15. This is going to be for our ice level sensor and you'll get one of two readings. You'll either get a 01 for bin full or 02 for bin not full. Now, if your unit is not making ice, and you notice that the bin is in and it's not full and it reads that it is full. Obviously, your ice level sensor is bad and that's what will need to be replaced. Now, on the subject of ice makers, I want you to jump all the way to test number 36. This is going to be for an ice box fan. And during this test, you'll want to activate it by hitting switch three and one would be on and two would be off. And at this point, you want to put your hand up at the top to check to make sure you're getting airflow to that ice maker. 
it needs strong airflow here. If you do not have strong airflow, the chances are you have a bad ice box fan motor. Number 37 is also an ice maker test. This is going to be for the ice maker thermistor. And you'll either read pass, open, or short. Obviously, we want it to say pass. So you've went through a couple of different tests and your ice maker still isn't working. This unit actually has ice maker error codes. So jump down to test number 56 and let's take a look at what these different errors could mean. If it shows a E0, this is for no errors, the ice maker is functioning properly. E1 for a no cool in the ice maker compartment. E2 for a motor lost position. E3 for a heater timeout. E4 for a dry cycle. Then finally, E5 for an ice maker thermistor is bad. Of course, this will wrap up diagnostics. To exit diagnostics, you'll simply want to press the two buttons that you press to enter. Once it counts down, it should be cleared out. If you do need the tech manual, you can obtain it by either going to the manufacturer's website or putting it in the repair help section on appliancevideo.com. YouTube, if you enjoyed my content, do me that solid like and subscribe, and as always, I'll see you next time.